Hi guys, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Hassan and I have been helping clients to configure analytics and tag manager on their website. And this channel is for other people who are trying to understand how to configure analytics on their platform. In this video, we are going to see how we can actually configure begin checkout event on a WooCommerce store using Google Analytics 4 and Google Tag Manager. This video is part of a bigger playlist and it has been made such that it makes easier for you to navigate for each different event however you want. But you need to make sure that you have watched the first video in the playlist where we have actually configured the Google Tag Manager container or our WooCommerce stores and we have also configured the plugin that we need to trigger the data layer events. And before jumping into this video, we need to make sure that we actually understand what actually is Begin Checkout Event. Begin Checkout Event fires when the user is on the card page and is redirected to the Begin Checkout pages. That means the user click on either proceed to the checkout button or they directly click on the checkout routes. This is the page where they fill out the information about their email address, phone number and shipping address and all of the good things. The checkout process has been divided into three different steps. The first one is begin checkout, the second one is add payment info and the third one is add shipping info. All of these three events creates another report inside Google Analytics which you can find under e-commerce, monetizations and checkout journey. This checkout journey takes the user from the begin checkout press to the shipping info, payment info, and finally purchase. So this video is going to help us see how we can configure that first begin checkout event that can also be used inside purchase journey report on Google Analytics 4 reports. Here you can see that how many users has actually started the session. That means they came on our website and how many of them viewed the products, then added them to the cart and finally made a, uh, started the begin checkout process and finally made a purchase. You can also use these events in custom reports. One of the custom reports I have built on Looker Studio is showing me the name of the items that I have on the store and then how many users are viewing those items on the store, how many of them are adding them to the cart and finally how many of them are clicking on begin checkout buttons. Now we can see how we can actually configure this event on Google Tag Manager so this event is properly being tracked on Google Analytics. To make everything much more simpler, I have divided this particular video into four different sections. In the first section of the video, we are going to see how we can trigger the data layer event and when exactly the data layer event is triggered. We are also going to see in that section if the data layer event is correct or not. And in the second section of the video, we are going to create the triggers, variables and tags that we need to fire this event. In the third section of the video, we will be doing some testing to make sure everything is working all right. And in the final section, we will publish the containers and make sure everything is live on the production website, not on the demo store that we might have. So let's just go to my computer to get on the first step. So here we have the Google Tag Manager container, which we configured on the first video uh, of the playlist. And you might see that we have already some tags of view item and add to cart. We also have a configuration tag that we also added in the first video. These two things were added in the other two videos that were added in the playlist. You can find them in the description below. So let's just quickly connect our website with our Google Tag Manager container by just clicking on the preview button. Preview is more like a temporary debug session that is connected with our Google Tag Manager container and with our website just to make sure that everything is working all right. Once you hit on connect on the debug mode, this will connect a temporary window with our website. And we can see basically all kinds of events that will fire on the website. So let me open this website debug view side by side so we can see the data layer events that come inside the viewport and then we can also see all of the events on the website. Let me just go to any of the product pages to just show you how the data layer events looks. And if I will click on any of the items, you can see that I can see some different events coming into the data layer such as message, consent started and view item. As soon as I will click on add to cart event, there should be an add to cart event right here. And this add to cart event has all of the information that we needed for the data layer event. Now we are on this page. Uh, to trigger the checkout event, we need to be either on the cart page or on the side mini cart page. It depends how your store is working right now. For this particular store, the user has to go to a cart page in order to go to the begin checkout page. You can also see that there is a checkout button on the top, which can also take the user to the checkout pages directly. However, either way, once the user click on proceed to checkout, that's not where the event is firing. The event fires as soon as the user lands on the checkout page. So we can see that this is the checkout page because it has the URL checkout. The checkout does not have to be there, but in this store it is. And we can see that the chicken checkout event has fired. In order to verify if the event is properly enhanced e-commerce or not, we can directly click on the API call or we can just select the data layer event and go to the data layer section on the <coughs> Google Tag Manager debug view. 
Let me maximize the window so we can see all kind of events that are coming in. You might see that I have some of other information such as custom information and customer details and some other things that we also configured in the first video of the playlist. You can go back to that and see if you need that. And here we have an e-commerce object. This e-commerce object have all the details of the items that are in the cart right now. We can see the currency value and item object. So now since we can see that this uh, event is properly finding on the website inside the data layer. Now we need to make sure that this data layer can read the data from the Google Tag Manager and send it back to the Google Analytics 4. For that, let me just again open both of the windows side by side and let me move this debug view into this uh, website section. Let's go back to my Google Tag Manager container and click on creating a new tag. A tag in Google Tag Manager is something that fires a script off to any other third platform or the first party platform. First party is anything that is related to Google. Third party is something that's related to Facebook, Instagram. That is not on Google.com. And each tag has two different things. One is a trigger and then the second thing is the tag. Tag is the script itself that is firing and the trigger is when that tag is supposed to fire. And in our case, we want the trigger to be specifically firing on the begin checkout event. And we can see the name of the event right here, or this is also the name of the event. So we are going to copy this name of the event and we are going to create a custom trigger. And since this custom trigger is going to be an event inside the data layer, we are going to select a custom event. Let's rename this one to custom event begin checkout and let's hit save. So now we have created the trigger that we need for this tag. And now we are just going to create another tag for GA4 event. Let's just select Google Analytics 4 and select Google Analytics 4 tag. You might see that it needs a few different things such as measurement ID, name of the event, and then we need to figure out some way to send all of this information related to the items and value and currency back to the GA4. The first thing first, we need to make sure that we have the measurement ID so we can go back to our Google Analytics account. And on the top of the search bar, we can search for measurement ID. And if your spellings are correct, then you will see the measurement ID right there. Let's just copy this measurement ID and go back to the Google Tag Manager and paste it right here. You can do this thing. Otherwise, we also created a variable inside the first video on the playlist where we created a constant variable for GA4 measurement ID. So we can refer it back and back and we don't have to go and copy and paste the variable. The naming of the event has to be precise. It's everything small letters and spaces are replaced with underscores and it has to be begin underscore checkout. If you name it something like else, like initiate checkout or begin checkout with different spellings, the event is going to be triggered inside Google Analytics 4, but it will not be recorded as an enhanced event. And if the event is not enhanced, it will not show up in the purchase journey reports or checkout journey reports. So let's just create the name begin underscore checkout. And now we need to also make sure that we are also sending back the enhanced e-commerce data such as value, currency, and all the items array. There are two different ways to do that and we are going to see. In the first section, we have event parameters where we can send all of the values manually. For example, we can send value, we can send currency, and then we can send items array. Uh, since, as we have talked in the other videos, value, currency, and items array are the only one that we need for add to cart, view item, begin checkout, remove from cart, and all the other events. Only the purchase event is the one where we need eight different parameters. Rest of them only need three of them. This on the left side is the value parameter that is requested by GA4. And on the right side where it says values, this is where we need to dynamically capture the value from the data layer and send it back to the Google Analytics 4. So Google has created these data layer variables that can actually go inside the data layer API calls and get the values that they need. For example, if you want to get this value, we can see that this value is right here. But this cannot be accessed directly because this is inside an e-commerce object. And to access anything inside of an object, we use the dot notation. Let me show you what I mean and it will make it easier for you to understand. So let's just, oh, seems like I have already created one and I can just show you right here. So for the data layer variable, uh, it's inside the e-commerce object and I am going to write e-commerce dot value. And this will go inside this object and get the value parameter. And I have done the same for other ones, such as e-commerce items and e-commerce currency. Seems like I created those in the previous video, so luckily we don't have to recreate them. So let's select this one, and let's select one for currency, and then let's select one for items. If you're still curious how to create these variables, let me just quickly show you right now. So you can click on the plus icon on the top and create a new variable for this one. The new variable is going to be the data layer variable. And again, this just requires the name of the first object, e-commerce and if you want to track value then we can name it e-commerce.value 
I'm not going to save it because I don't really need this one. So let's just discard the changes. Great. This is the first option to track the values and send it back to the GA4 property. There is also another way to do the same thing. And that's much simpler and much faster. If you go into the more settings section, you will find an option for send e-commerce data. Once you click on send e-commerce data button, you don't even need to create these variables and everything should work fine. So you need one of these, you don't need both of them. So let's just rename this variable as, let's rename the tag to GA4 EEC begin checkout. And let's hit save. Now we have successfully created the tags and trigger. Let's just verify if everything is working all right just by creating the preview debug session again on the website. Great. Now I'm directly going to the card page because I know that I have to trigger the begin checkout event from the card page. And let's just add another item to the card so that the, there are one more item array. So let's hit proceed to checkout. And once the user is on this checkout page, we can see that the begin checkout event has triggered for me again. Now we can see that we have three items in the item array because we updated them in the previous page. And now on this begin checkout event, we can also see that this event has triggered one tag on our store and we can see that it has one item array. Now we need to verify if this information is properly sent back to the GA4 or not. And there are multiple ways to do that. The first one is going on the container sections. Containers are basically anything that is finding on your website and related to G tag. It can be of Google ads, Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager, Universal Analytics and anything. Uh, now, right now we have two different containers. One is for Google Tag Manager and one is for GA4. If you will go inside the GA4 container, we can see that there is another hit sent for the begin checkout event. If we will scroll down, we can see all the details of the items. We can also see the uh, value parameter. We can also see the currency parameter right here. Since this is the debug mode, we can also see that there is also another parameter sent as debug view one, right? Uh, we can verify the same information on Google Analytics account itself. And we can see that the begin checkout event is firing here. Once you click on it, you can see all of the items array. And if you will go to the parameter, you can see the value that is coming in and also the currencies itself. Doing all of this thing, make sure that we are actually configuring the begin checkout event and everything is working all right. But we still need to make sure one thing that all the changes we have made, they are actually published and on the production web website. So let's just make sure they are live. So let's rename the container GA4 begin checkout. If your spellings are correct, everything should be good in the first step. And I don't think my spellings are really good. Anyhow, uh, once you make sure that everything is published all right, then that's really working. And uh, after 24 to 48 hours, once you have configured the event, you should be able to see all of these reports populating the data. Uh, we still haven't configured the purchase event. And in the next video of this playlist, we are going to see how we can configure the purchase event. And after that, we will be going back to the remaining events such as ad payment info, ad checkout info, so that we can create this journey, checkout journey report inside Google Analytics. It was really fun. Until then, have a good day. Goodbye.